Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, I'm excited to show you this um, episode today because our topic is how to use Luminar with Photoshop when it comes to um, compositing images and putting them all together. So, let me dive right in. So, here we are right here with the Aviator. Now, I started this project several years back. And this is one of my little girls, Erica, who I've been photographing for the last five years. Now, or I'm sorry, since she was five years old. So here's what we're going to create. I'm sorry, let me pull that back. All right, we're going to create this look here using a plane and Erica. All right? So now, can we use Luminar solely by itself? to extract Erica from the background? The answer is no, because we need a graphics program such as Lumina or such as Photoshop to be able to do this. Now I could take this in to the local brush tool and painstakingly try to remove it, but that's not gonna do the trick. Now I will say you saw the advancements with Sky AI and now you'll see Portrait or um, Portrait Bokeh AI coming out real soon. I can't wait to see if we come out with an extraction tool to where this here will be just a matter of one click. I'm going to show you the old way and how I do it because that's the way we have to do it for now. All right. So here I am. I am. I'm going to right click on a PSD. So this file right here, I already merged them together just to save time, but I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm going to show it in Explorer. On some windows, if it's in on a Mac, show it in Finder. And right from here, I'm just going to open up Photoshop. So I'll double click on it. And here we are inside um, Photoshop. Now, let me take you right to the end point. This is what we're going to create. We're going to start with these two images here. Now, this image here. I've already extracted it from the background. There, when I did this way back, um, I just used the magic wand tool and then select um, right here, select subject, and that did a great job removing Erica the way they did. However, I'm gonna hide this mask for a minute. Look at what it really did. I mean, that's doesn't look too good, but because we're gonna merge it with the plane, you're not going to notice that. So all I did here was just blur that slightly, and we're never going to notice it when we put it with the plane. All right, so how do we get to this part? Let me delete this here. I'm going to select these two, the plane and the mask. Control or J to duplicate both of them. All right, so now I have both of them on its own layer. And what I'm going to do is this, right, since they're both selected, right click and I want to create a smart object. So convert to smart object. Now all a smart object is, is a container. So if I double click on that smart object, it's going to open up the two, the two files that we just brought in. So it's going to open up the plane here and Erica. All right. So that's all a smart object does for us. Well, if we create it as a smart object, the cool thing is now Luminar becomes a smart filter. So I'm gonna come over here to the filter menu, Skylum, and now I'm gonna run Luminar AI as a smart filter. As it opens up, now we're gonna notice something. I'm still running the standalone program. So I still have the standalone program running. Now I open it up to where it's a, um, the smart object is opening it up as a uh, plugin. Make sure I did connect it. All right. Oh, there it is. It's already there. And let me remove one. There we go. So let me double click. All right, Photoshop. All right, let me do this real quick. Photoshop, uh, and, and again, 
I shouldn't blame Photoshop because I did install, let me remove this for a moment. So I'm gonna do this. I did install it, um, the plugin. So let me just double check to make sure. Here we go. So I'm gonna go to Luminar and install as a plugin. And sure enough, it is. Let's uninstall it for a moment. All right, so you know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> hey, people, I kid you not, three minutes before the show started, I did this to make sure that I wouldn't have to reinstall um, it as a plugin. So let me bring you right back again. Well, that's kind of good because then I can show you my, my process on this. I'm gonna close down for a moment and right click, this is for Windows users, right click on Luminar, and then I'm gonna right click again, and I'm gonna run it as an administrator. So that's very, very important, I can't stress it enough. You have to run it as an administrator to give it permission. So although it looked like it was installed, um, this is a new release. I may have had the old release somewhere in there, so we'll fix that in a moment. All right. So let's come over here and we'll go back to file, install plugins. I'm going to uninstall it. I am running it as a, um, it's going to do it again. It's going to pop back up and then I'll reinstall it again. Oh. That's why I saw, I'm sorry, there we are. All right, guys. Um, let's see who do we have here with us. Pat, hello, Pat, Gary. All right, well, guys, guess what? I want you to show me or tell me what did I forget to do. Most important, I tell everyone this, and I didn't do it. Close Photoshop. Whenever you're installing a plugin, no matter what company it's with, make sure the, the programs are, are closed. Now we'll do it. We'll come down. Right click. Right click again. And run as an administrator. Good. There we go. So, again, <laughs> only because we're live is where, of course, things start to happen like this. So, you have to make sure Luminar is running as an administrator. The set of Windows machine. And then make sure, make sure that Photoshop is closed. So when photo, Photoshop is closed, then we'll automatically install the proper uh, plugin. And it, that's not just for Luminar, that's for any plugin you're dealing with. So file, install plugins, uninstall, there we go. Uninstall, reinstall, reinstall. So now we know they're installed. There we go. Now I'm gonna come over and do the same thing. Uh, show an explorer. And I'm just doing that because I don't have to go searching for it. All right, here it is. And open. Make sure, okay, there's the proper one. So making sure I have the right Photoshop opening. Give it a second. Good. And here we go. All right, so we have it right here still. Now I'm gonna come over, filter, Skylum Software, Luminar AI. And here it comes. There it is. All right, so notice it's running Luminar AI is a standalone program and it's also running it as a plugin. All right. Would you get better performance if you just ran them separately? Of course. But again, for, for this here, I'm just trying to show you um, how I use Luminar to find some of my images like this and then uh, transfer them over to Photoshop. All right. So we're here. Now the fun begins. Edit. 
Now I've already created several templates for this, but let me show you how I created it from scratch. All right. Of course, Accent AI is my number one go-to. So I look at this and think, okay, now that I have it looking good, the colors, of course, are not the same because one was shot in the studio, one was you know, something I purchased off of Adobe Stock. So I'm going to come down here and try to fake it just a little bit more. So I'm going to click on the sky selection. And I like that sky, but I want to replace it with a different one. And once it goes in, there it is. So I have the new sky in. Now I get to have fun. The number one tool to give me that, that look that I'm going for is the dramatic tool. Now you see me use this a lot for my sports, my sports grip look. I don't want to go overboard with it, but I do want it to start getting like a snappier punch to, to an image. The difference here is I want to dial back the brightness and I don't want it to be as desaturated. So I'm going to bring it back. Now the grip look looks great when you desaturate the colors. But for the aviator, and she's a female, I want to see her lips. I want to see the beautiful skin tone. Look at this. Just that one tool, before and after. All right? Now, since this is a portrait, since this is a portrait, let's jump down here to the portrait tools. And what I'm going to do is slim her face. Now, before you start complaining, Vanelli, oh my God, she looks beautiful as she is. Erica will tell you, when she looked at this, she said, did you shoot with a wider lens? Sure enough, she knew. I photographed her with a 35 because the space was really, really tight. And that's not how she normally looks. This, to us, is how she looks. So what I'm correcting for is for lens distortion and honestly, for a little bit more of a pleasing photo. All right? So here it comes. Give it a second. And after. All right. So once that gets in there, we got it. Now, uh, for her face, Erica has beautiful eyes, but through those dark chocolate brown eyes, to it absorbs so much light. So let's bring out some of those. Her, her eyebrows look great. Her lips look really good. Um, but you know what? Let's add just a little more. Um, a little more uh, redness to it and then darken them up just a little bit. Oh, I like that. All right, come down to skin. Now, we did have a, a makeup artist on set, but I'm going to add just a little skin softening to tie it all in. All right, there we are. And we're set. Now, to tie all of this in, all right, to tie all of this in, we're going to do one last trick. Before I do that trick, I do want to come over here to vignette, choose a subject, Erica, and I want to, not that much, because remember, remember, we're outside, so I don't want the vignette to be too much, but I do want to apply it slightly, and let's see if it's doing its job, because the goal is to draw attention to her face. There we go. Up, oh, good. So we have that set. Now, here's a little secret ingredient that we should put in. Whenever you're doing composites like this, make sure you pick. It could be mystical, where I could apply mystical, and that's going to apply to the entire image, not just on her, but the plane and her. So we want something, something to tie both of those in. I like mystical, that looks good. Typically, I like to come down to the mood, to mood and choose a Lutz. And with Lutz, let's choose, that one looks good. Each time I do this, depending on my mood, they come out different. I like LA, or let's use Los Angeles. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but just that little, just that little bit kind of ties all the colors in. So it doesn't look like 
She was shot in the studio. The plane was shot outside. Now, if I did photograph this outside, um, for the rest of Gary and the rest of us, tell me, would I put Erica closer to the plane or further back away from the plane, closer to the photographer? So A, put her up right tight to the plane, take the picture, because that's what it looks like, or B, move her closer to me. All right, so if we were to really do this outside, you'll notice her pupils wouldn't be as dilated. You really can't see them that well. But if we were out the outside, the, the pupils, pupils would constrict and they'd be really small. So that's usually a good giveaway. Oh, there we go. So that's usually a good giveaway right here. All right. So that's a really, really good giveaway on how to get her eyes to look um, more like it was shot in the studio or outside. Sometimes we use a flashlight beaming on the person's face so their eyes constrict and then take the picture. All right. So the answer to the, what I was getting at was we would have Erica as far away from the plane as possible and then snap the shot and compress it with, let's say, like a 200 millimeter lens. All right. Now, I can always count on Jerry. Let me pull up this here. Jerry says, how do you get the windblown scarf effect? Thank you. So there's two ways we did it. Either one, we bought it where there's wires in it, which no, we didn't. Or B, we had an assistant or an intern hold the very, very tip of the scarf. And when I said action, they would throw the scarf up. And what we had was, it's called a blow it fan. Unfortunately, they're no longer in business. Um, but man, that fan was amazing. It was actually built for drummers. All right. So if the blow it fan, you may even, you still may be able to find some online. Just type in blow it fan, really small, powerful. So we would shoot the fan. And when I say action, they would throw the scarf, not back, but towards and up towards the camera. And this way it gave us, pull up here. And by doing that, it gave us that look right here to where it looks like it was blowing in the wind. Now, that was one little trick I did on that here. And let me apply this first of all. Pull it back up. Good, Russell, you're right, closer to me. Gary, thank you so much for that question. And I'm just waiting for it. Let's wait for it to go back in. Good. And by the way, for those who um, join us on Monday through Thursday, we do have a coffee break at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And those are interactive. Like This is interactive, but you have to, I have to wait for you to ask me the question, whereas the other ones are on AI Insiders, and those episodes are done with Zoom. So you just unmute your mic, ask the question, boom, and we answer it. So if you have time... Monday through Thursday, those are great questions, or those are great episodes, and you can ask us anything after we're done showing the feature tutorial. Then we stick around for almost 45 minutes, and you can ask us any questions you want from there. All right? So let me pull it back up. So now, here we have Erica. Oh, now it's back. <clears throat> and look how cool that is. Oh, let me pull it back. So there's Erica without it. And there she is. So what do we have to use Photoshop for? We use Photoshop or some graphics program to remove the background completely. Once we got that background removed, then we let Luminar do its magic. Because for me to do this particular look inside Photoshop would take a long time. Now, yes, they just added the new sky replacement tool that they have. But stuff like that would take forever to do. So there, that's where Luminar comes in and helps bridge the gap to where you get as creative as you want without make, taking up a lot of time. Now, here's one little other tip I did. Here's Erica's picture. I'm going to show you how, let's see. Control T for transform. Yep. So originally, she was up like this. 
Yep, she was up like this originally, all right? And I kept saying, Erica, lean forward, lean forward. She just wasn't, she wasn't getting um, the hint on how we were doing it. So instead of frustrating her, I said, right, you know what, you're looking great. Stay the way you are. I rotated the camera a little bit. Still wasn't enough. Then I brought it in. And when it was like this, I just took it and rotated it like that. Now by doing that, by doing what I just did, doesn't it make it look like she's leaning forward and that scarf looks a lot better going behind her? So those are just little tips. Don't ever frustrate your subject. You know, um, uh, every so often put yourself in front of the camera. Let somebody else take pictures of you and let them give you directions. And if you get the person saying, hey, uh, move to the left. No, my left. All right, step forward. No, forward, your forward, not my forward. You get to the point where ugh, you get frustrated. You never want a subject to be frustrated. So in a case like this, and she's very experienced, when I noticed that my instructions wasn't getting through, hey, Eric, you're looking great, leave it. I adjusted in the camera, still wasn't enough, that's okay. I knew I could easily rotate it and the image came out the way I wanted it. So, one last tip. Since we dealt with a smart object, make sure at the very, very end on, on Windows, Control, Alt, Shift, Command, Alt, Shift on a, on a Mac, and then press the letter E. What that just did was from this point down, it flattened all those layers into one layer. This way, in case something happens to this smart object. Or, I'll use an example, I no longer use Luminar Flex. So Flex was so long ago, well, I originally created this in Flex. Well, if I don't have Flex on my machine, when I double click on that, it goes nowhere. So it's very important to make sure you, you take a snapshot of what you want the, the final outcome to be. And then up in here, if you notice, I just, I labeled it as um, complete. All right. So that's just a little extra tidbits on there. Now, a couple things I do want to say, wasn't, the, did it take a while to go from Photoshop, extract everything, jump into Luminar, do its thing, look how fast that was, jump back over to Photoshop. Wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if you're inside Luminar and just like Sky AI or um, the new Portrait Bokeh AI, it automatically masks that for you with one click of a button. So if you love that type of feature, please go, go to um, Skylum.com and put that a request in. Put one of those in for a request and say, hey, I would love to be able to have an extraction that you want to call it, what do you want to call it either extraction or it's actually I don't want to say blue screen or green screen but removal of the background so to remove the background of a subject I think that would be amazing because that would that there alone would have taken what I did and probably saved 30 to 40 minutes now you saw how fast I did it with Luminar so I would create, which I have, my own um, templates for the aviator. So if I were to bring 10 or 15 um, people in to do a whole series on the aviator with different planes, different models, all that cool stuff, one click, I'll have the identical look and style for it to match the entire series. So that's the power of using Luminar with it. The extraction is something you'd have to use a third party for now. In the future, if that's part of it, oh, that, that's gonna be just a one click, um, one click template and everything will be done. So you can see as a portrait photographer, I get really excited about that, all right? All right, let's see if we have other questions. I see. Hello, Ian. So Ian says, does Luminar have levels 
adjustment feels. Does it have, does it have layers or adjustments? Is I think what you're asking. Level. So as for layers, we've talked about this. Let me come back over and share my Luminar screen. All right, so here we are. And if I click on edit, okay, you're saying levels. Okay, so not layers. All right, so as for levels, like um, I'm trying to think. So what you could do, um, here's a better, before I try to answer it, um, Ian, what are you trying to do with the levels? Are, are you trying to properly expose the image or are you talking about if we're here, are you talking about these levels like this? So are those the levels you're talking about? Um, if it is, right, tools like Action AI. Oh, red, blue, and the, okay. So, so tools like Action AI does a lot of that for you. Let me go back over here. So, here we are. We have red. So, this is in Photoshop. Green and then blue. Yes. Okay. So, you do have the curves, which again, you're at more of an advanced level. When you're talking about levels, when you're talking about levels and curves, now you're at more of the advanced level. All right. And that's great, but I'd rather use like Accent AI to help me or to help me fine tune all of those. If you want to get really into it, then you can come down here to the curves and do the same thing. You have your red, your RGB, um, green and blue, then you could do your levels here. But as for your curves, rather adjustment, but not levels identical to what Photoshop does. Because keep in mind, they're two separate programs. Photoshop is a graphics program that does some photography stuff. Luminar is strictly a photography program and it has some of the graphic elements in it. The goal is to be very creative, very quickly, without having to go through, you know, um, a lot of instructions. Like you saw when I, when I made her skin smooth, and Ian, you remember this back in the old days, You'd have to do frequency separation, and you're like, oh my god, this is some major pain. And then you created an action, which a lot of Photoshop users don't know how to do, and the actions at least built the stage for you to do frequency separation. And then you were all excited that, hey, wow, look at this. I can do frequency separation, which used to take me, let's say, 10 minutes. I can move it down to two minutes. I had the same mindset when we were removing blemishes, and I thought that was the coolest thing in Lightroom. Until I got Luminar, one click, it removes the blemishes for me. Why is that so cool? Again, if I had 15 images, I don't have to go through and remove the same blemish on the same person, but in a different location 15 times. So the batch processing style will be in there. So I guess it's, it's two schools of thoughts on the way you want to approach it. Some love editing, some love being in front of the computer. That's a graphic artist or a photo retoucher. They love that. Photographers love to be out in the field. They want the looks that they're, that they're, other, that they're seeing from others. They don't want to spend a whole lot of time getting that look in. So you decide, are you a graphic artist, a retoucher, or a photographer? And you could be all three. Just whichever one you are, be that person in that moment. I'm a photographer. This Erica's picture, I would have shot this. I would have shot this differently. I do have friends that have vintage planes, so I would go out to an airfield or whatever they have and um, ask them, "Hey, let's set up a photo shoot. Put the bottle in front of it and do that." We do this. We do the same thing with some tanks. So here in our nice little area of Brevard County, very nice um, community, 
we have tanks. So my buddy has them and they have them for rides and stuff. So we took a group of photographers out with models and did a whole series on, on tanks. People asked us, well, how did you match the tank with the model? That was so cool. How did you composite it? That was a real tank. Wow. So if you don't have access to that, then you do what I just did. If you have access to it, then you become a photographer, get the shot in camera, and then bring it in and do your, your magic. All right? Awesome. Let's pull this up real quick. Um, Ian, I completely agree. I work in education and need fast editing, especially with other teachers who have less skills. Um, I'm amazed at how fast they can just click and get the results with Luminar. Awesome. Hey, and thank you for being an educator. The world needs more educators. Thank you for your service. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. This was very fun to work with you on one of my favorite projects. And the answer is please keep them coming. That's what makes it so much easier to teach the stuff that we're doing. Because if you don't know the answers, you ask the questions. It's my job to help you find those answers. All right. Well, thanks again for joining me. And I'll see you at the next coffee break.